Despite the legal provisions for citizen participation in the affairs of local authorities enshrined in the Urban Councils Act, community participation in urban planning is relatively low in Zimbabwe. Local authorities in the country are weak without adequate structures and systems and are under-resourced for effective service delivery, resulting in residents' poor living conditions. The centralized planning and governance system has limited flexibility and service delivery options, limiting innovation on alternatives. As a result, accountability mechanisms in service delivery are weak or non-existent. Planning for services by local authorities is characterized by weak or non-involvement at all of the residents who also lack knowledge of civic planning and service delivery processes. This is evidenced by weak and non-existent grassroots structures and voices to demand or to negotiate for better services. This culminates in poor service delivery, such as erratic water supplies, failing waste management, poor road infrastructure, chronic sewage bursts, and unresolved tenure issues, among others. In addition, many local authorities' annual budgets have experienced delays in approval, and more often than not, there has been a perennial tug of war between local authorities and residents on the rates or service charges to be paid. In response to this obtaining state of affair, Practical Action Southern Africa, through its Improving Access to Infrastructure Services program, has been implementing a four-year European Union funded project in Mutare and Epworth. The project is called Promoting Examples of Participatory Local Empowerment in Urban Planning, People Up. But what specifically does the project seek to achieve? People Up is an acronym for the full title, which stands for Promoting Examples of Participatory Local Empowerment in Urban Planning. It's a project that uh, seeks to um, empower the residents in participation in the planning, the design, the management, the evaluation of services. It seeks also to improve their living conditions in such a way that as they participate in service delivery, they have got a feeling of enhanced ownership to the extent that the same processes enable them to increase their income revenues and income streams. The project is um, seeking to work with local authorities in such a way that um, introduces a new way of uh, planning that is um, opening avenues for residents to have a role in deciding, in planning, in ensuring that their priorities are brought to the fore. So the major pillars that we look for to attain are working with local authorities so that they've got systems and structures that are open enough to integrate uh, residents' priorities and needs as they work them through. And on one hand, and on the other hand, also the, the project seeks to work with communities to ensure that their voices their structures have got the ability, the skill to negotiate for better services in such a way that makes them have a part to, to play in the accountability processes of service delivered. And then thirdly, the project then seeks to establish a, a partnership framework which seeks to bring in also the private sector in the service delivery. The project is being implemented through a tripartite partnership involving Practical Action Southern Africa, the Mutare Housing District Union, and the Civic Forum on Housing. Primarily, the project will benefit a total of 302,000 residents from both Sakuva, the oldest suburb in the border city of Mutare, and Epworth, the mixed formal and informal settlement 12 kilometers southeast of Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. What did this project did to our members? One important element is it opened dialogue between the council and the communities, which was never there. Because th th there, was, there was a situation of a rate and a cat and a rate here, where council would chase people to pay money, and the people would refuse to pay money because they are saying, you are not providing service. Why then should I pay money for the rent? So, so it, it was like people would have their houses closed because they are not paying rent. We have their water disconnected. The dialogue that we opened as a project necessitated people to come around the table and say, is this feasible? Is this the correct thing? 
So that is seen, the council realized that the people now have a voice. The methodology of the project of empowering communities is a very powerful tool. We believe that this can be replicated in other local authorities. Um, it empowers communities to take a leading role into management of urban areas as opposed to the old approaches of urban management where the uh, technocrats will take a leading role and plan for communities. And this one, the methodology is trying to empower communities to take a leading role in planning and identifying issues of life rules. Project work is also being carried out in close cooperation with the Mutare City Council and the Epworth Local Board. The responsible local authorities, mandated by the Urban Councils Act for local governance and service provision in the target local authority areas. There is collaboration with the Urban Councils Association of Zimbabwe, which will serve as its influencing and dissemination conduit to other urban local authorities for possible uptake of the participatory planning in urban service provision model. The People Lab project that was set up by uh, that was initiated by Practical Action, uh, more specifically as a pilot project related to Mutare and airport, has helped the, you know, the city of Mutare in a very big way. It has involved the planning, the planning process writing from the grassroots instead of um, council planning for the people. The people are planning for themselves. And then all that we do as council is to integrate those planning initiatives. There has always been some kind of some confrontation when during probably during uh, budget time you come up with a budget proposal, people say we have not been consulted or you are imposing issues on us. In the, but now, now the fact that we are planning together, they feel very proud because they own it. And their initiatives have resulted in a lot of uh, things that have come up. We have been able to come up with food bridges, we have been able to come up with uh, what the disabled persons want, you know, some roads, they've all said humps here and there. And there are some projects, that, more specifically in, in Sakuba, that have been initiated. We used to plan for the people rather than planning with the people. So what it means in, in this project is that um, people um, were able to come up with, the, uh, you know, making decisions or prioritizing uh, projects that do affect them. So in other ways, uh, we are now participatory, uh, we are now using the participatory method, which means uh, uh, to us, we are able to implement projects that do affect uh, people in terms of their rankings. So the issue of missing link, or the issue of bridging the gap, uh, and the issue of ownership of projects is, is now being addressed. Community-based planning, CBP, has been conducted in all the seven wards of Epworth and in all the five wards of Sakuba in Motare. Emma Chitendera is a resident of Sakuba High Density suburb in Motare. She had been experiencing poor service delivery in her area. By participating in the project, she has been involved in community-based planning processes and has been given a voice in urban planning activities. <laughs> The community-based planning approach has created space for the community members to articulate their priorities and has therefore promoted community empowerment and ownership of the planning process culminating in the development of ward plans. People up project, 
Vitinga di blanket, rangaraga vara, vagaru musa kuba. Tagati singa ziko zero zero, sema resident. Dichin taka nanga nane ku nema nese ma services etino ana kuba ma service providers. Tagati singa zuti tine ko zero, kuto tichi ah tichi tine ko zero ku yuko taura sa tino da kuti zungu sisi tuko mawads. Uye ne ku contributor, ku plan. Ino shandi sikuwa kukansu Ndiyo panga pazi patanga tisinga tombo ziwezo wa mtuosi Asi, maybe this project itaka bata vurwa Ne sot ka onot Ah, tisuari ziwe venjimbo Tisine kwa zero ya kupa Matisijens ne 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 kuronga kwa sekwe tino dao tichi Location edu inge kaita Project ino ngati wa shitanga kuya wanaongo shika niku implement Asikuti Waka tanga ni kuti zizisa e, Utaka pina ma workshop saka wanda Ni ma training saka kati wande Waka kwanza utinge tichiba tsirika kunzikisisa Shirongwa icho chiche people up project Ni civic forum on housing Kuti tikuwa nisa kuzinge tichibuda ni draft plan Ya kata say, say what seven project Draft plan ine urongwa e, Une china mga chiku tinge tichinzikisisa ni kuziva e, Mamiru wa tinganga itaka ita Murongwa wedu webu diriro E, unosanga nisa kunyangene ino umi industry e, ta, yaka unge yaka buda shakare wa project yo hii kutitinge ichi buda sezo hairi seko na kwa muru kita kuda iso e, ngango ti product yes ataka kwansa unge ichi buda mkuru nga kwa ataka ita the project is expected to offer an alternative service delivery model that encourages joint up thinking and collective decision making it will build the capacity of local authorities to plan with the poor and other stakeholders in infrastructure service delivery. Already, the project has started to enhance community knowledge, skills and understanding to negotiate processes that promote and sustain the delivery of basic infrastructure services as enshrined in the enabling legislation. Saka tuna kutisusu, tulikutenda practical action because yaka ita zimu zinu zinu ita kutisuti simu ziri. Tichipatirana shikari ni epo ito loko wabudu, tichishanda pa mochete, tichiwilirana, tichitawilirana. Kwete kuti from top to bottom, but bottom up. Dozo hatino daizo kutisunu ngazi wepa ground, zi wepa grass root. Ma decision hawa wepa grass root, za hatino daizo. Kwete kuti tipiwe zinu kutisanzi zita izu wakati. Because mwomisa azisiri zo za toda, chini zinu za hatino da. Sega tuvona kubwa pasi kuti hizi ndi Doza tineta kana tine ma problem zedu e, Tinufona kuona kuti Mune ma civic group akadi Ani ma problem za hapi To detecta kuona kuti Ma problem za haka wanda ane wano nda hapi To tanga kuona kuti problem yedu nde hii ya tinga solve Chichenda chichi Chichi gazirisa 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 Kiko hapu yewe yaka basi rapa ku Motivator community Kuti inge kana chida chungu Tumefana utosishandira Tu saka diyo yangu iri kuita ichi chova ichi pusha kuti patango zao tu kuni rubati ro community ni yangu iri mwanja. However, the last two years of implementing the project have not been smooth. There have been a number of challenges that had to be overcome. Three quick challenges can just come to mind. One of them has to do with challenging the traditional approach which the local authorities have been using in planning, which is more of the top-down, where the technocrats will do the planning for the people. And then secondly, it has been to, the, the issue to do with expectations. The more you engage your residents, the more they participate, the more they've got expectations. They are looking forward to all their wishes, their priorities, priorities being responded to. So that then becomes a challenge. How do you manage the expectations as opposed to what you can meet with the resources that we have. And then the last thing also is to do with the current prevailing scenarios in urban settings where you have got political polarization. That's one of the major challenges we've seen in, in the way that people would want to draw the project to themselves or to be attributed to the success which is happening on the ground. The issue of donor syndrome is, is, is creeped in us to some levels where people were not able to do work for their own, uh, but, but basically relying on, on handouts. When we introduced the project in Sakupa, people thought they have now, or they have their problems now solved by a, a donor coming in and they would get some allowances after every meeting. 
uh, this, when we told them that this was not the, the case, we, 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 we had some drops in terms of attendance. Where you used to have 100, you then took off half the members coming, half not coming. Again, it was upon ourselves that we, we explained to them the concept of the, the project that it has nothing to do with giving people money, but to empowering them to know their rights, to question, to develop their areas, and to live in areas that they desire. The level of education of our members, we are talking of Sakuba, is a high density suburb, one of the oldest suburbs in Bhutan. The people that we were meeting there, some of them never went to school. And it was very difficult for them to quickly understand and conceptualize the issues that we are discussing about. But nevertheless, we, we ended up using our mother language, which worked in our favor as a strategy. Our resources are limited uh, to address all the needs that have been identified by the communities. Um, we need to go, the project needs to go an extra mile in resource mobilization and also create linkages with other service providers so that they come on board and close the gap that have been identified, that is left or have been identified by the community through the planning process and also the gap that is left by people up because the project cannot uh, address all the needs that the communities have identified. As the project enters into its third year of operation, there are a number of lessons and experiences already emerging. So far the key lessons we have picked are that if you work with, um, with parties that have got common interests, though they might have different positions, the, the, the focus on the interest then draws them together. So in this case, the interest between the residents and the local authorities has been improved the service delivery. To such an extent that magnifying the issue of interest then also begins to, to narrow the, the, the chasm between the two. And that's one key lesson we've, we've learned. And the important thing that we can pick from there is that you have mechanisms in which both parties feel they've had a role in defining the actual definition of their interest. That's a key lesson. And then secondly also that if communities are empowered, they're enlightened, then their engagement becomes meaningful. It doesn't become um, a more of, uh, combative, but it becomes the one that is seeks to find solutions. So what we have understood is that while if, if you have to work with residents in a successful way, especially residents that have been uh, deprived of good service before, that have been disappointed from the past uh, failures, there's need for them to understand how the service delivery process goes about in such a way that they have a role to play. And then the key thing also we've learned is that as long as there is um, things that have to do with someone's livelihood, there will always be maintained interest. Hence, the project seeks to then expand or go to the next level, not only